Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am taking you through an antique store in Greenville, Illinois called Third Street Market. One of my booths, Green Onion Vintage, is located here. It is kind of our secondary location, but this is actually my hometown where I grew up. So I have taken you guys through this store a few times in the past, but it has definitely been a few months since you guys have got to shop through here with me. So I thought it would be a good time to walk you through some of my favorite booths of the store. I'm not taking you through the entirety of the store, but I definitely have a few booths in this shop that I, I especially like to shop every time. Um, I collect those striped Marshall um, jugs there, all of that stoneware. Uh, so I was definitely interested in checking that out. That one was $48 there though, so that's a little bit higher than I typically pay. Um, I try to find them at like estate sales or yard sales where I get them for a much cheaper price. But uh, in this antique business, you know, we're always trying to make a profit here. So it's kind of hit or miss about whether I can buy things in antique stores that I still have enough room to price them in my own booth and make a profit. Um, sometimes I get lucky and I find something that someone hasn't marked very high and then I can take that and resell it. Um, but sometimes things are already priced too high for me and I don't have room to make a profit there. So I still enjoy walking through the shop no matter what um, and just seeing what everybody has. So either way, no matter what my goal is when I am looking through the antique store, um, I typically enjoy it and it's always a good time. I got to go here with my mom today um, and my baby Miles. And so we just walked through the store. It's been a while since I got to come here too. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you some of my favorite things that kind of stuck out to me today. I didn't end up buying anything for resale, but I will still check back as often as I get over here uh, just because there is so much potential in this store to find some really cool things. I almost left with this recipe box and next time I go there I'll probably will get it. I don't know that it's truly antique. It's definitely not antique. I mean it's from Hallmark but it might be a little bit older and I just loved the decoration on that. So they were only asking $9.50 and it had like the organizing cards inside. I don't necessarily need that but I would use it and I just thought the artwork on that was super cute. Um, so I'm just going to play some music here and there. So just sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy some thrift shopping with me today. So this booth has to be my absolute favorite in the entire store. Um, of course, I have to put my own booth aside when I'm making that judgment, but the lady who runs this, she has such a good eye. Um, this booth is located just to your left when you walk in the front doors and it's in the front left corner of the booth. But I always find th things here, even if I don't end up purchasing anything, I always find things that I really love. Um, I'm kicking myself for not picking up this copper creamer and sugar set for only $7. I don't know why I didn't get that. It's so cool. I could probably upsell it for a little bit more than that in my other antique store. Um, or I might have just kept them because I really do like copper and those are so unique. That oil lamp was really pretty. It was just such a nice little size. And you know what? I didn't even look at the price of that cabbage pitcher, but how cute is that? I've sold similar things in my booth, so I know that would have gone well. And I love that kind of stuff for summertime. Um, I think why I like this booth the most though is I've, she has a lot of good architectural pieces almost all the time. So I've got a lot of shutters from her and just other like cool wood antique pieces that I can transform into something else. Um, so most things that I buy from her booth, I will upcycle and then I'll sell them over in my other antique booth, which is located at my treasure house in Edwardsville, Illinois. So it's really nice to have two booth locations like that. I know I've said that before on my channel, but kind of gives me um, a, a back and forth kind of system for if something doesn't sell well in one booth, I can flip it over to my other booth, which is in a different town. Um, the stores are kind of different vibes, so um, it's really nice to have two places to shop at and also two places to sell. So um, I really was enjoying all of her artwork. Um, I've been kind of looking at TikTok lately and seeing what um, interior design trends are going on right now. And there's a lot of like trending artwork, especially like older landscapes, especially oil paintings. Um, so I'm trying to kind of be more open-minded when I'm going thrift shopping and antique shopping to see what artwork people are are featuring because I actually think that it's pretty um, on trend right now to have some really cool true art pieces. Maybe we're finally kind of getting sick of like the Hobby Lobby reproductions or you know things you find at Target, Home Goods. They're everywhere. You can just get things that are copies of copies of copies. But to find like true artwork 
at an antique store. That's just so much more special. So I am all for using artwork in your home that is done by an actual artist. I mean, even if it's just somebody who did art for fun, I would rather feature that any day than something that was bought for new. Not that I don't have a mixture of both. I definitely do, but I'm leaning more towards these true antique pieces nowadays. I love this little piece of pottery here. That's also something I've been very into lately. I don't remember... Uh, four fifty. Oh, I'm kicking myself right now for not getting that. I think I'm actually going to Greenville tomorrow when I'm editing this video. So maybe I will make a point to go back to this store because I love that piece right there. I do not know why I got it. And then this that I'm picking up right now is my favorite piece that I saw today. It's a salt glazed water bottle. She was asking 24, which is probably fair. Um, and I would definitely have to keep it at that price. I wouldn't be able to upsell it probably more than that, even though I actually haven't checked eBay to kind of price compare that. So maybe I could have sold it for more. That was just one of my favorite pieces. I loved just the color and the finish of that salt glaze. I don't know why, but um, I was very into that. Um, and then just kind of moving around her booth, she has a lot of go good, like crusty, rusty kitchen stuff, lots of mixing bowls. I love all that. She has a kitchen scale, the rolling pins. So I definitely show you guys a lot of her booth because I just love everything she does. I love how things are displayed. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I just love it. I very much enjoy it. I almost bought this shelf too. Um, I just think she has a good eye. I'm not exactly sure where she sources. I mean, she must just shop estate sales constantly. I know my mom's chatted with her a few times when they bumped into each other while they were working on their booth. Um, but we buy from her pretty much constantly. As you can see, she just has a really good eye and has such good pieces. Okay, so now we are moving into my and my mom's Green Onion Vintage Antique Booth. Um, like I said, this is one of two of our locations, and this is our location where we have all of our physical Dixie Bell products on hand. Um, I also sell Dix Dixie Bell on my Etsy site, so if you're not local, you can order from us on there, and I'll have that link down below. Um, so we have a ton of Dixie Bell in stock right now, and then in addition to that, we sell furniture here, antiques. Um, upcycled items, uh, anything we find that's interesting at garage sales, estate sales. Um, so this store is a lot of fun. We have a lot of flexibility about what we're allowed to sell here. So um, it's not quite as curated as our other booth, I would say. We have a little bit more fun here and just a little bit more laid back for sure. Whereas our other booth, we, ha we try to stick to a very specific style. Um, this one is more of like a flea market style antique booth that we do try to keep stylized in an interesting way, in a way that is kind of cohesive and is easy to shop through. So this secretary desk here, my mom painted in the cactus green from Dixie Belle. It's a silk paint instead of a chalk paint. So it has that primer and that top coat built in. So she's asking $2.25. That barn transfer on there is from Dixie Belle. 
Um, I just think that really came out pretty and the distressing is really nice. So that is still available in our Greenville booth at Third Street Market. So if you're interested in that, that is where that's located. So I'm going to show you just really quickly some of the Dixie Bell products that we carry too. There are some transfers now that those are pretty new for the Dixie Bell line. They used to just be a paint company. So they're really expanding all the things that they offer. Um, I've only used a few of their transfers and they work really well. Um, and if you've used maybe the Iron Orchid Design transfers before, they're just the same. You just rub them on and then they are uh, like a permanent, um, almost looks like a hand painted object on your piece of furniture. And then you just top coat over it and then you're all done. Um, these are all like our top coats that we have. We have a little bit of everything here. Dixie Belle sells glazes, metallic paint, um, waxes, whether that be like clear coat waxes, white waxes, or even like um, gold and pewter. And um, there's a few other like metallics that they sell. So they really have a little bit of everything. Um, and I guess that's all the Dixie Belle I'm showing you right now. <laughs> now I'm going to show you this table that my mom painted with the Route 66. Um, Route 66 actually is right by my house. Um, we saw our town recently just randomly on a YouTube video as they were RVing through Route 66 and we saw our town on there. We were so excited. But uh, anything that we put Route 66 on, it actually sells pretty well around here. Um, so that was just like a little dining table that she refinished and then stenciled that on. And then we just have, you know, a lot of other small trinkets, collectibles. We sell glassware. Um, I have some plates over there. Um, just a little bit of everything. This piece is a prime example of us having to move our inventory from one booth to another. If something doesn't sell in one store, we will just kind of try it in the other one. So this blue buffet that my mom painted, um, it never sold in our Treasure House store. We don't know why, we think it's so cute. Um, so we moved it over to the Greenville store. I do think it's still there, but I guess if it's there for a while, we might have to just maybe pick a different color or something. I do think if the, the blue was black instead, maybe that would be a better neutral for people. Um, I really like the look of like matte black buffets too. So I don't know, maybe next time I go over there, we can uh, pull that out together and kind of rework it because it's just been in here too long and it doesn't make any sense because it's such a cute piece. Um, we also have this little hutch here. And then um, in a minute, I'm going to show you a little secretary desk that we had at um, our tent sale recently. And so that was just another piece that we had to move over from our Edwardsville booth to our Greenville booth and just try to give things a second chance here as well because it can be hard sometimes to find the right buyer and we never really know which town they're going to be in. Sometimes they're going to be in our Edwardsville store and sometimes they're here in our Greenville store and we never really know what to expect. It's definitely um, a business of trial and error for sure. And that's it for our booth at this shop. And now I'm going to show you just another booth that's in the front of the store. This actually recently changed hands. Um, so I haven't got to see it yet until I was recording this. There's just this an amazing salt box up there. I'm trying to show you, but I didn't actually, I wasn't able to reach up high enough to give you a clear view. But that was a really cool piece. Um, I really liked this new booth, though. I think it had a lot of good pieces in it. Um, and there's this ginger container I'm about to show you here. I don't know if it's even vintage. It might just be a reproduction piece, but I just loved all the colors in it. So I'm gonna show you like a closer view of that. I just think those old canisters are so cool. And that one had a lot of good character to it. Like I said, I don't think it's actually old because of the sheen of the metal, but I do think that was a really pretty piece to have in there. And I just liked all the color that they used in here. why but this black speckled piece I forget what they called it here spongeware really caught my eye I think it's just because it's black and white which I'm typically pretty drawn to um, so that was something that I'm gonna keep my eye on see maybe the price goes down a little bit and then I love this little wooden toolbox with all the drawers I think that'd be so nice in a craft space so it's another thing that I might come back and get in the future and then I'm moving on to the back of the store now this is a very large antique store um, I typically check out this booth here because I've definitely been able to find some good treasures here 
And then I'm going to walk you just through some of my other booths that I like um, throughout the back of the store. But like I said, there are many, many more booths that I didn't have the time to record today. So if you are someone who enjoys antique shopping, I would definitely recommend this shop in Greenville. It is unfortunately one of the only antique stores left in the area. Um, besides Greenville, you would have to drive out further like towards Litchfield, Illinois to get to a lot of shops. I don't even know that there are many left in Vandalia. And then, like I said, we have a shop in Edwardsville. Um, and there are a couple resale shops in Edwardsville, but there's not a huge variety of stores anymore in our area. But like I said before, though, Litchfield, Illinois, they have a really um, good amount of stores that are still open as far as I know. And once a month, they host the Litchfield Pickers Market, which I have shared before on my channel. I haven't got to go yet this year, though. Um, and I kind of doubt that I'll do the July one because that's normally so, so hot. But maybe if I do go, I will definitely share it here on my channel. But if you are an antique shopper, you definitely need to check out the Litchfield Pickers Market. And then they have a bunch of stores to shop in as well. still very drawn to crockery bowls even though I definitely don't need any more in my house. Um, we are pretty much filled up to the max with the collectibles that I can have in my kitchen space especially um, but I do always check the price to see if I can just snag a really good deal. And then this noodle board they're only asking 45 for and I've seen people DIY these and I just thought that was a really pretty um, piece, a really good idea. So it's something that you would buy and you would sit on your oven just as another countertop space or serving space or you can make noodles on it like they probably are suggesting by calling it a noodle board. So I just wanted to share that idea with you guys too while I was in here. Um, and then this is a booth that always has a ton of enamelware. So if that's something you're ever, ever looking for, um, and it's definitely abundant in here. And I wish I would have looked closer at that white teacup that we just passed. And then that tea kettle right there reminds me of one that I've sold in the past that I would always regretted selling. And I don't know why. I think just by the time I got to this point, I was holding a baby. So if the camera's shaky, that's why. And he was getting fussy. So um, if I do go back soon, I'm going to check on those things as well. Because I think that white tea kettle was so cute. It was enamel. And it's definitely something that I would like to buy. so interested in this scale because it's green and white which is my absolute favorite color combination i don't i can't remember it looks like it was about 40 something dollars so that's a little bit higher than i would like to pay but i do think i'll keep my eye on that piece as well um, and then this booth is just one of the funnest booths in the store they always have a ton of really little tiny items that you have to really search through to find what you're looking for but um, that's what kind of why it's my favorite one because they have a lot of really cool interesting items really truly antique pieces that you're not going to find anywhere else so this is kind of in the back right hand corner of the back part of the store so you kind of got to walk your way back there but it is such a fun part and i loved all their like really interesting artwork here but that's going to be it for today's video i am so glad that you guys spent some time with me and i will see you next monday for my next video bye guys mm -hmm.